What is up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. The last piece of the puzzle has snapped into the place for XRP. I want to talk to you about institutional investors. XRP will be used indirectly by big companies like BlackRock and Fidelity. BlackRock, the largest hedge fund in the world, $10 trillion in assets under management and their connection back to XRP. I'm going to cover that all in this video. Let's hop right into it. So tomorrow's a big day for the XRP community. It has been learned that statements from 3,000 XRP holders will be involved in the lawsuit between Ripple and the SEC. The notarized testimonies referred to in law as affidavits were collected by Ripple. The collection of XRP holders' affidavits was made possible thanks to the steps initiated by John Deaton, who represents XRP holders in a class action lawsuit. So Ripple has gotten statements from 3,000 XRP holders in pro Crypto lawyer Jeremy Hogan says the last piece of the puzzle equals actual XRP holders. 3,000 individual statements. Bringing in the affidavits of XRP holders is the last piece of the puzzle. According to another attorney, Jeremy Hogan, XRP holders are responsible, are responding to the securities charge with two arguments. And guys, hear these, hear these arguments out. I'm not sure I agree. Firstly, the cryptocurrency was purchased for use as a payment or for other non-investment purposes. Be honest, guys. Did you buy XRP to pay someone with it? Maybe some of you did, but I know I bought it because I thought it would go up. I bought it for speculative investment nature. So I don't know about that. On the other hand, those XRP holders who have confessed to investment purposes have said they did it not from expecting a return from the company, but from the exchange rate difference. Okay. Um, this will all undoubtedly include the motion for summary judgment details which will be available tomorrow so tomorrow monday the 24th we have a lot of stuff coming out all right and now for the first clip i want to show you here we have um kevin o'leary talking about how banks make money transferring assets okay amy said there he was talking his book this is my interpretation he feels threatened by some of this technology particularly around payment systems because banks make money transferring assets. It's a cost of friction in the system. And one of the only reasons that I invested in Circle, and I'm an investor in Circle, I'm supporting their initiative, and I'm a big believer in what stablecoins can do, is it's time to get rid of that friction. And it's not important that banks be protected so that they can make fees from that friction. When you transfer the US dollar, into the Swiss franc to buy Nestle on the Zurich exchange, these banks add zero value. There's no value created in ACH transfer fees. If we could use a stable coin that was regulated and approved by both sides of that transaction, it would be more transparent, it would be much faster, it would de- So here he is talking about the advantages of using a stable coin for these transfers. He also talks about how banks don't like this technology because of how innovative it is, right? It's taken away market power from them. But on the same side, banks make money transferring assets. What does XRP do? It saves them money when they transfer assets. So it can, if, it, if it can save them money for their number one cash generator, which for a bank is tra transferring assets, why would they not use it? And that could easily be why they are attacking XRP. And here he talks about institutional capital, all right? interest in institutional capital coming into, let's say, USDC and Circle. Circle, by the way, took in $200 million from Fidelity and $200 million from BlackRock a few weeks ago in a Series F at a $9 billion valuation. They got $54 billion of coin. So end of the day, regulation comes, Bitcoin goes up. And I agree with your thesis that it's a good asset to have if you're an account. So you hear that? BlackRock the largest trust, the largest hedge fund in the world, 10 trillion, people call them the fourth branch of the US government, put 200 million where? Into USDC in circle, okay? This is not just any random stable coin. You have the oldest power player in the regular financial system, BlackRock, 10 trillion, largest hedge fund in the world. And where are they investing 200 million? Circle USDC. And now some interesting statements from the CEO of Circle. All right, speaking to the World Economic Forum. 
solve this problem. And I think we're really close. I mean, USDC itself um, has, we've seen over three and a half trillion dollars of transactions directly on the internet between counterparties. And, and so um, if we can you know, improve it with more scalable blockchain technologies like you know, Brad's company uh, provides, um, if we can you know, improve it with more scalable blockchain technologies. Like the company, like the one Brad's company provides, right? CEO of Circle, who's, black, who's backed by BlackRock, who knows Brad Garlinghouse and what Ripple can do with their technology, mentioning at the World Economic Forum, hey, we can scale the use of USDC with things like what Brad's company is doing. If that doesn't get you guys excited, I don't know what will hit the like button. It really supports the channel and the video, and it's the weekend. Hope you guys had a good weekend, have a good Monday tomorrow, but hit the like button to support the channel. And how ironic for Kevin O'Leary to be talking about stable coins and all of this when just a few years ago, listen to what Kevin O'Leary was saying on television about crypto. Such a scam. <laughs> like, that's just totally BS. So I would say two things. One is um, it's disruptive technology. So if you look at it from a technology standpoint. But that, that also has an odor of BS to it. Calling Bitcoin a scam, right? After all of that, and now what, a year later, he's done a complete 360. Speaking of stable coins now, a lot of people have thought of JP Morgan's coin, JPM coin, how that could possibly be a competitor. Listen to what the CTO of Ripple, David Schwartz, has to say about JPM coin. Does that kind of freeze you guys out? or I, I think it's actually helpful. Um, one of the problems that people have is the ability to hold digital assets can be difficult, particularly with the volatility in some digital assets. Stable coins um, are safer to hold if you can trust the issuer. So I think to that extent, um, it, can, it can be helpful because then you still need liquidity. So if you imagine um, a dollar stable coin issued by JPM and you have maybe some other dollar coins issued by companies like Circle and, and, and everybody seems to be issuing a stable coin. And then you have stable coins in other currencies because if you're not in the United States, a dollar coin is not really all that stable. You still need liquidity between those stable coins. And I think it's also important to remember that these stable coins have counterparties and there isn't a universal counterparty. There isn't some counterparty that everybody in the world can have equal access to. It's going to have to be in some jurisdiction. It's going to have to be part of some regulatory regime. Regime. And so I think if, if the vision is this. So JP Morgan can't be the counterparty for all these banks. Citibank will not want to use JP Morgan's JPM coin, right? They need a, a neutral counterparty. And that's where Ripple could kind of fill that need. And then the last one, Brad Garlinghouse talking about JPM coin as well, kind of summing it up. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Thank you in advance, guys. JPM coin. And he's like, well, like, probably not, you know. And so, well, is Citi going to use a JPM coin? Is B of A going to use a JPM coin? Is PNC? And the answer is no. And so does that mean we're all going to have these different coins? And does that mean like we're back to where we are, where there's right. lack of interoperability? So like, well, I don't get it. So let's think about this. The JPM coin, they announced for institutional customers, if you give them a dollar in deposits, they'll give you a JPM coin that you then can move within the JPM ledger. Wait a minute, just use the dollar. Right. Well, I, don't, I really don't understand. Like, if you're just moving it within the JPM ledger and it has to be dollar to dollar, you know, a one to one backing, it honestly doesn't actually, I don't understand what. So it doesn't make much sense, right? Why wouldn't you use the dollar? XRP's ledger has competitive advantages. There's a lot of utility to using that instead. Really just dismantles the JPM coin. If you guys are still watching, comment water bottle below when you watch till the end. It really helps the video. So thank you in advance. Let me know you're one of my best supporters by commenting water bottle. Enjoy my Telegram group. It's on the screen. It's a chat group where you get information about crypto. It's going to cost money in the future, but it's free right now. So join it while it's free. The Telegram link is in the video description below. And subscribe if you're new. I put these videos out daily. Hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you never miss a breaking news update because YouTube shadow bans me. Until next time.